Good morning, student nurses. So for today's video, we will be demonstrating how to assess vital signs. So first step you have to do is identify the patient, discuss the procedure, and assess the patient's ability to assist with the procedure. This promotes active participation of the patient during the procedure. Second, prepare all the equipment needed and ensure that they are all in good condition. This facilitates organized assessment and measurement. Third, provide privacy. This is necessary to build trust between patient and healthcare provider. Lastly, perform hand hygiene. This is to reduce the transmission of microorganisms. In getting the body temperature, help the client to assume a position of comfort for axillary temperature. This is to promote relaxation. Take the thermometer out of its holder Turn on the thermometer and place it in the armpit. Placing the device in contact with axillary blood supply can maintain the device in its proper position. Remove the thermometer when it beeps and reads at the digital display. This allows accurate temperature reading. Inform your patient about his or her body temperature. Cleanse the thermometer using alcohol swabs before placing it back. This prevents the transmission of pathogens or microorganisms. Place the thermometer back in its holder and keep it securely until its next use. In taking the pulse, position the client so that her arms are relaxed and supported. Place fingertips, index, and middle finger on the inner surface of the wrist. Fingertips are sensitive, facilitating palpation of pulsating time. Compress artery gently so that it can be felt distinctly. This stabilizes wrist and allows pressure to be exerted. Using a watch with a second hand, count pulsation for one full minute. In taking the respiration, keep fingertips in place after counting the pulse and note of patient's inspiration and expiration. Make sure they do not know you are counting respiration to avoid controlled breathing. Count the number of respirations for one full minute. Lastly, inform your patient about their pulse rate and respiratory rate. In taking the blood pressure, assist patient and assume a correct position. This promotes patient comfort and relaxation. Remove a rearranged clothing to expose the area where the cuff will be applied. This is to avoid any disturbance while taking blood pressure. Extend the arms with the palm facing upward. Place the cuff approximately 1-2 to two inches above the inner aspects of the elbow with the bladder over the brachial artery. Blood pressure increases when the arm is below the level of the heart and decreases when the arm is above the level of the heart. Arrange the manometer gauge at eye level. This is to ensure an accurate reading. Palpate the brachial artery or radial pulse by pressing gently with the fingertips. Tighten the screw valve on the air pump and inflate the cuff while continuing to palpate the artery. Note the point in the gauge where the pulse disappears. Deflate the cuff and wait for 15 seconds. To prevent leaks during inflation, ensure the cuff is inflated to a pressure greater than the client's systolic pressure. Place the stethoscope earpiece to the ears properly, then position the diaphragm of the stethoscope firmly but with as little pressure as possible over the artery where the pulse is felt. Do not allow the stethoscope to touch clothing or the cuff. Sound is heard best directly over the artery. The head of the stethoscope under the edge of the cuff results in considerable extraneous noise and may cause inaccurate readings. Pump the pressure 30 mmHg above the point at which the pulse disappeared. Ensure that the cuff is inflated to a pressure greater than the patient's systolic pressure. Note the point on the gauge at which there is an appearance to the first faint but clear sound, which slowly increases in intensity. Note this number as a systolic pressure. 
read the pressure to the closest even number. Release air entirely from the cuff and remove the cuff from patient arm. This prevents arterial oculation and patient discomfort from numbness or tingling sensation. Disinfect the diaphragm of the stethoscope using alcohol swabs three times. This ensures safety since it prevents cross-contamination between patients. Next, perform hand hygiene. This is to reduce the transmission of microorganisms. Lastly, record the temperature, respiratory rate, pulse rate, and blood pressure reading on a flow sheet and indicate the time. Report any abnormal findings to the appropriate person. This documents the completion of procedure and assessment findings of patients, and it helps to determine the need for follow-up care.